Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mental Health Matters, the podcast from St. Louis Counseling. Check us out at stlouiscounseling.org. If you are wanting to be a sponsor, go ahead and contact Debbie Dugan at D-D-U-G-A-N at C-C-S-T-L. So please download the podcast, share the podcast on social media, share our website with all your friends and your contact list, because that is how you help us break down stigma. That's a big part of uh, what this podcast is about, making mental health okay to talk around the dinner table about, right? We want to be able to have easy and open conversations. So sometimes we do that by bringing on guests with expertise, people who are dealing with uh, mental illness directly. Um, The bottom line is we also want to have more guests on. So if you know somebody, if you're out there listening and you think you'd be a great guest, let us know and we'll see what we can do in regards to trying to, to get a schedule going with that. So as always, we always have entertaining guests and today as no exception now you may read some of our uh, descriptions for our podcasts and our tom's tips as well as other things um, that st louis counseling puts out Um, and it's always very eloquent it's always very informative usually there's a fun little pun in there as well too sometimes it's like an inside joke making fun of me i know what she's doing but that guest is Debbie Dugan. And that person writing all that is Debbie Dugan. And actually, Debbie is going to be on the podcast today. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm. It's fun to be a speaker and not a scribe. Today. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so Those are big cool. words. They are. Yeah, yeah. big words thesaurus. for me. Thesaurus. I'll give you a thesaurus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Debbie, um, interesting. Debbie was on our board of directors for several years. And then uh, she kind of I guess, fell in love with what we do at the agency. And she brought uh, her talents to us with marketing and business development and uh, years of experience with some PR as well, too. So uh, we've been blessed to have her um, part of uh, the team. Just from, you know, you've heard me talk before about skills that we possess, right? So she has some tremendous skills in that area. But then she has this other set of skills from uh, uh, living um as a parent with somebody with mental health uh uh issues right because we all have mental health that's right right we all have mental health so uh today we're going to talk about adhd uh we're going to talk about what it's like to be a parent of somebody that has had and has adhd so uh you might hear a little passion in her voice too so we'll see um and i don't know if i'll even be able to stop her talking at a certain point actually that's probably going to be the biggest that's going to be the best thing right just Cut me off. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I guess, first of all, why do you think it's important you kind of share your story? Um, I think a lot of times, and I, I can't speak for the dads, um, but with moms, I think we tie um, so much of who we are to our kids. And when we have trouble figuring out who our kids are and what's going on and what they're doing, um, it's just really difficult to move forward with a lot of things and, and not beat ourselves up for whatever we're not doing right. Um, and being the oldest of five girls in my family, each one of us is so different, hmm. my sisters and I. But I, So I don't know why I expected my two boys to be exactly the same, yeah. <laughs> but they're not. And they both are um, just great kids. But I had Brian our older son, um, pretty much figured out because we're so much alike. And he's three and a half years older than Paul. And Paul came out so different than Brian, but not just not in a way that um, was hard. It just was so different. And I didn't really expect that coming from the two parents, Uh you know. Um, And when I look back um, from when he was little, he always struggled with sleep that was a huge thing he had acid reflux as a newborn um i remember nights where i would be nursing him and i'd go to burp him and i would be sopping wet from from him getting sick and so there were always things that paul who's our younger son has he had to overcome in a lot of ways um and he's just an amazing kid for um having gotten through those but going through that and not knowing what the different um, 
struggles that he had really were about being ADHD. It, it was really hard to find the help that he needed to get. So a long-winded version uh-huh. of why it's important is because it is a struggle. And as a parent, um, you, you want to do everything that you can to get the help that your kids need. Um, but it's figuring out what that is um, first. Mm. And that's what was really difficult for my husband and me as, um, because we just didn't know what was going on. Well, and, and so often, you know, we're dealing with the person that has the mental health issue or the mental illness, right? And so there's a lot of focus put on that person. And of course, because we want to help them feel better. But then the toll that it takes on a parent, right. a caretaker, whoever it may be. And that sometimes I think it's lost in translation because the parent is the one like one just trying to navigate a mental health system that is very difficult. I mean, just an insurance company is difficult, let alone the ins and outs of different levels of mental health services. Totally. And that was one of the things with the board of directors being on that was um, we have great insurance. We have all the resources at our fingertips. We live in a city with so many different hospitals that are good, um, so many different resources that are there, and we had trouble navigating it. So what does that mean for people who don't have those resources or don't have the insurance or don't have, how do they ever get the help that mm-hmm. they need? So, um, yeah, it's just, it's it's um, an interesting journey, um, and it, I don't want to make it sound like this was this terrible thing mm-hmm. that um, that we've had as a family. It's not. It's been a great learning experience. But from a parent perspective, um, the frustrations of not being able to help your child right away are, are just really difficult to mm-hmm. kind of navigate yourself. So I think we tend to beat ourselves up as mm-hmm. well, um, not being able to figure out what that is. And, and especially with school and as that developed and the struggles with executive functioning skills and organizing and um, just sticking with something and focus and, and just seeing how difficult it is for really bright kids. It's, you know, um, Paul's a super bright kid, um, but he struggled a lot with mm-hmm. school and how to navigate that. So it's just it's a journey. You know, when you think about, you know, just ADHD in general, right? And just a very, you know, that's for people out there listening, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, right? And so a lot of times that's where we character. We use that term a lot, very loosely in society, like, oh, I'm so ADHD or you're so ADHD, you know, because someone is kind of all over the place, you know, or they're not keeping the same single strain of thought. Um, they can't keep track of or keep, stay on task with their uh um, activity or whatever it may be. Um, they're sitting up, sitting down, moving around and stuff. So that's how I think, you know, from a very high level way of looking at it, that's how society looks at that. Right. And the terms we use, of course, it's like, when you think about it, it's like, Oh, we're just using that term so loosely when Mm -hmm. someone is extremely bright in school, but they're having a hard time concentrate, you know, And and I know people out there that are listening have experienced that even at work, there's adult world of this as well too. Um, or at school and like, you know, we, we pigeonhole people into like, Oh, they just don't want to listen. They're bored, you know, when right. in reality, or lazy. you or know, lazy. a lot of times that was the assumption, um, or you're not disciplining him well, or, you know, all these different factors when, you know, when you look at the whole executive functioning piece of the brain and how that's the control center, the command center, and everything from emotion to um, organizing to focusing to memory, um, all those aspects that for people who don't have ADHD, it's really difficult to understand how it could be so hard um, to move forward on something that seems so simple. But the carry through and, and all of those pieces that are attached to organizing, planning, Um, all those pieces, it starts to make more sense. And I think that's what I struggled with a lot too, because when Paul enjoyed doing something, he did it full force, you know, and and he was in it all the way. Um, Music is a huge thing for him. So he took guitar lessons and drum lessons and um, 
when there were other songs he couldn't figure it out, he'd listen to it and he'd spend hours working on, on the music and, and learning how to play. So I would struggle with, okay, well, you know, he mm -hmm. is doing this and he's teaching himself. What's the problem with writing a paper? And, and as someone who does write, um, I, that was something I could never figure out. And it would be 930 at night and the paper was due the next day and Paul would be frustrated as could be. And I have to get this paper done. What do I do? And, and so a lot of the navigating, um, before, he was even diagnosed because he wasn't diagnosed until he was 12 mm -hmm. with ADHD and then had medication and, and did therapy, which those two things have to go together. You know, it, it's um, to just do one or the other, and it might work just to do therapy for kids. You know, it's, I, I am a proponent of the medication that works for the child. Mm -hmm. It's for me, it's like, um, and, and my husband, we, we feel the same way that it's, like diabetes if you need insulin then you take it so mm -hmm. that you're um, able to do what you need to do and your body does what it ne needs to do same thing with ADHD you know if there's mm -hmm. a deficiency and it can be helped um, through medication then I think it's great um, as long as it's the right medication mm -hmm. finding that right right match is exactly so important. which and that too is hard you mm -hmm. know so that's another piece of the whole ADHD piece that that falls into place and but um you know I have a tendency to forget what I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> so well, it might was... be that Paul gets the ADHD <laughs> from his mom <laughs> huh, it's coming back I together I don't know it's all fitting together well, I, I will add, just so people are listening out there, Paul is very well aware that we're very sharing well aware. this yes. um, as well, yes. too. I so. called him before, and I said, is it all right if, if I talk about your ADHD? And he said, yes. And I said, can I use your name? And he said, yes. And I said, okay. Yeah. Then, and then it's all going. So I'm surprised he didn't say anything like, yeah, call me Hercules. Yeah, he right? might at the end after <laughs> yeah, he hears yeah, yeah. this. <laughs> You'll get a text. He will, yeah. Um, but no, I just wanted to make sure everyone realizes that, um, you know, we... Uh, we uh, make sure if we're going to talk about stuff, people are aware of that. So as a parent, right, you know, you mentioned at times it's trying to put ourselves like so, so often when kids are inside our, our household, our culture, it's like we know them so well, right? Like that's who we are. That's part of us. And then like that world of frustration, it has to be right or not under not understanding because the frustration comes from not understanding like a good example like i don't see how someone couldn't write this paper you right, know right like as a parent how do you looking back now right you know what advice would you give to people parents you know mm -hmm. that are trying to work through that to yeah. get that understanding um it took a lot of um yelling you know mm -hmm. um and pestering to try to figure out, okay, let's backwards plan. You have, it's due this date, let's backwards plan. What do you need to do mm -hmm. from here to there in order to make that happen? Um, that sometimes worked depending on what else was going on. Um, to be very aware, and, and it's a fine line of being helicoptery over mm -hmm. your child and also helping your child understand that there are consequences if it's not done. And I would start to feel guilty sometimes with the consequences because a lot of times it was so much out of his control. You know, the, the time management piece is a big piece with executive functioning and, and getting lost in time and um, not really being able to gauge that. So I would feel bad harping on things that just were difficult for him to to just do because of, of the way the ADHD, ADHD brain is. But um, it got to the point where, and I'm just gonna use papers as an example because it, it was so real for us, but the night before a paper was due, what would end up happening would be, Paul would have had read everything, the research was done, but he just couldn't get the thoughts onto the paper. So, because, you know, most kids have laptops now and, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of school, I would say, okay, you tell, tell me about it then. What, what can you tell me about what you have to write that you just learned? Mm -hmm. And so he would talk and I would type. So 
I thought about getting Dragon, that voice yeah, the thing that types for voice you. Voice to text. Yeah. Um, but we didn't. So mm-hmm. I ended up being a scribe. Mm-hmm. Isn't that funny how yeah, that's yeah, happened too? It it's kind of that. all coming back. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. It does. Mm-hmm. So um, he would talk out what his thoughts were, and I would type them verbatim. And then we would go back through and look at what he wrote and how that related to the theme or to whatever it was that he needed um, to write about. And then it was putting the onus back on him and saying, okay, so this is what you're telling me. This is what's here. Now, what does that mean for the first paragraph? Like, Mm -hmm. you know how to write that first paragraph. It's your intro. So what from this information do you need to take so that that can be part of that? So Mm -hmm. um, many times I wanted to just write it for him Mm -hmm. and be like, okay, this would be so much easier and I could get to bed now (laughs) instead of midnight. I could be in school again, too. It's going to be good. Um, I feel young again. Yeah. yeah. That, that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he ended up being able to take it from there and then mm-hmm. was able to do the typing. And then we would go back through and then look at it and, and see if it, you know, fit with, with what he's learned. So doing things like that were helpful mm-hmm. for him. Finding strategies that work for the individual. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, now, group projects, that was always difficult Mm -hmm. um and no matter how old he was with those those always um were trickier um so i don't have any advice Mm -hmm. on how to do those (laughs) um but you know math was a big thing so he was able to do that and that was good Mm -hmm. so how do you uh so you know being a parent overall tough job um you have to wear so many different hats so many different things you have to do how do you manage when you you know your your child you have to educate people about your kid right, right. so that's another right. level than right. the parenting so then as a parent i would think it's like oh man you know i got to do this also and how come people teachers family right mm-hmm. um whatever it may be you have to explain to them this is who you know this is who my son right. is right? right so as a parent caretaker right how do you get past that kind of level of frustration that, mm-hmm. you know, with schools and family, friends, whoever right. it may be? The good news with schools is they were very equipped for that. Um, so many, and, and I learned a lot from the learning consultants or, you know, whoever was working um, with ADHD at the time and, and different things to expect and how the school could help. So that was very already mm-hmm. in place. Um, I think it's, they're learning more and more about ADHD mm-hmm. and learning disabilities and all of that so much now that um, that was really helpful. What I found um, to be hard was how many people, and, and I'm included in that same group before I learned more, looked at ADHD as behavioral. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, well, you're not doing your job as a parent. Like if you would discipline him, he wouldn't be acting like this. He wouldn't uh-huh. be having a temper tantrum over whatever it is that that he's having. And and once I learned too that there is a very real emotional component, emotional regulation component to ADHD and how mm-hmm. difficult that is for kids because their sense of frustration is so high. Um, first of all, I think they recognize that they are different and they learn differently. So that's a source of okay, I'm already different. Um, you know, I feel kind of bad about that. And then the frustration of not being able to achieve what they're trying to do that all the classmates are doing mm-hmm. can, can be a really hard thing. So I found myself to, to also be before, um, before Paul was diagnosed, be, being that same way, like, well, mm-hmm. if the parents would just get it together, uh-huh. this would uh-huh. be better. Um, judging. And, judging. Yes. And I remember being at church one time two times where there was a kid in front of us and Brian, our older son was, um, he was probably about four and this kid was just acting up at, in church and during the whole thing. And I thought, okay, I really hope that kid is not in Brian's class. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, because, you know, having the perfect oldest child and oh, yeah. as myself, mm-hmm. an oldest child, it's, exactly. it's so easy to look at other children as uh-huh. not being that way. Yeah. So then 
And I don't know if that kid ever was in Brian's class or not. I don't know because mm -hmm. um, yeah. I couldn't even remember who he was. But then it was me. It was okay. you. Okay, yeah, good, thanks good, for, uh, good. No, I don't think you would be way younger than <laughs> I am. So I don't think that works, Tom. But good try. Yeah. Uh huh. So then we were at Mass once, and well, regular pew that we would sit in and everything mm -hmm. else, and we it was quiet. And all of a sudden, Paul is going up and down the pew, hitting our butts as we're kneeling in, uh -huh. the, in the pew. And I'm grabbing his arm behind me, and I'm thinking, God, I just, I, I'm so frustrated with this kid right now. So at the sign of peace, this woman behind us had two teenage boys with her. And she said to me, peace be with you. Lots of peace. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, okay, I have the kid now uh -huh. that nobody wants to yeah. have in the class. But she turned to her one son and she said, um, he was just like that and he is a great kid mm -hmm. now. So, a little reassurance. A little there. reassurance. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's educating about the brain more than anything and, mm -hmm. and what does. ADHD look like you know mm -hmm. they have shown with um, CAT scans or MRIs how the brain is physically different for people with ADHD than mm -hmm. than not with the pre you know the prefrontal cortex yeah um, that whole piece um, so it's a very physiological thing and I think the more that that becomes mm -hmm. um, made aware of I think the easier it's going to be to understand what these kids are really struggling with and then what can be done to really help them. So really educating. So, you know, knowing that as a parent, you're going to have to do some education right. um, for people. Yeah. Um, and or, in your and life. yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. The science behind it right. as exactly. well too, because exactly. you're dealing with all the emotional side as yep. everything. Yep. Well, how do you balance, you know, the emotional side too of oh. like, man, this is hard. Um, um, how do I, I take care of myself? Yeah, I did not do well with that. Um, yeah, it was really hard to, first of all, it was hard as a mom to not think I was partly responsible for times that were so like, mm -hmm. okay, maybe I should have helped more with homework or mm -hmm. maybe I should have done more with this or, um, or maybe, maybe I, I should wasn't. Have gave him, um, the right food when he right. was uh, exactly. six months old exactly. or a year. Exactly. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So there was a little bit of that going on. But um, I think just being in the trenches, you know, like any time you are, you're just always doing what you, you think is the best thing to do or um, moving forward with what works. But what really helped me was talking with other moms whose kids – also had ADHD and um, just kind of thinking, okay, these are the same things that mm -hmm. that Paul is working through, or um, this is the same scenario that I'm running into myself when I'm trying to do this and handle it, and I'm not handling it the best way that I can. Mm -hmm. So it was really talking with other people mm -hmm. and um, just kind of learning what worked for them and trying it and, and seeing. Um, so getting rid of the stigma, like we don't have to keep stigma. it a secret. Exactly. Oh, yes, ADHD, I can't right, talk right, about right, this. Right, right, right. Or, and, and to stop feeling embarrassed um, and judged, mm -hmm. you know, that those two things too, I had to just stop caring what mm -hmm. people thought. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't know if Jim, my husband felt the same way, you know, mm -hmm. um, if it's more of a female thing that our kids are like a reflection of who we are and mm -hmm. if they're behaving awesome and if they're not like, Oh, you know, mm -hmm. how am I being judged? Um, because I did the same thing mm -hmm. to people. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I think that's sometimes where, you know, society, right. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't, we have all these opinions. We can look at something and see a person across the room and, we have a judgment in our mind, absolutely. But then it's so different once we have some personal experience exactly. with the situation, exactly. And then all of a sudden, it's like, huh, mm -hmm. maybe I need to have a different viewpoint of this right. because, you know, I really love my kid, and right. my kid right. is acting like this, and right. 
Now let me research this a little bit right, more and exactly. spend some time focused exactly. on that. You and know? then let's understand what's going on. Yeah. Um, and it's that whole piece of empathy that you talk about. Um, if we can't empathize with where people are, then we're never going to come to an understanding mm -hmm. of any differences that anybody has. So um, I think that's critical. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, as somebody that deals with a mental health issue, right? I mean, you know, one, finding interventions that are truly specific for the kid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which means, you know, you could be trial and error a lot. Yep. Right. Yep. And then at some point, something can click and something can exactly. work. Right. Exactly. If you need medication, then it's because that's the other thing. You know, there's lots of different medications for, you know, different illnesses. But we got to find like high blood pressure meds. Right. There's a lot of different right. high blood pressure meds. Right. right. But you got to find the one that works. Exactly. And then not to automatically say, forget it. Medication won't work. You know, exactly. won't do that. Um, you know, and, but then having that, those interventions, meds, including meds, if they work. Um, education to, to educate your loved ones as well as the others to right. how best meet the needs of your kid. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And then that self care is so yep. important as Absolutely. well too, which Absolutely. comes back to communication. You hear that? We right. hear that a lot yeah. about not people not feeling alone. Then. You Absolutely. Know? So, like, describe that. Describe like how that feels. That re relief, so to speak. Oh, of, it's huge. Oh, yeah. I'm not alone. Like, okay, they're. Yeah, that's exactly how it feels. Like, okay, someone finally understands. Someone understands my child in a way that I want him to be understood. You know, um, I don't want him to be judged because, and, and part of Paul's piece too was severe anxiety. And whether the ADHD helped facilitate that um, and, and making that worse, or if it just was separate, I don't know. Um, but that was a huge thing um, for Paul mm -hmm. where I couldn't go to field trips um, when he was in grade school because it would be so hard then to switch gears and then me leave and then mm -hmm. and him stay mm -hmm. in school. So um, when in the throes of the anxious moments or the ADHD not um, with him having a hard time moving forward with school and school being really tough for him um, every year, that um, to have someone be able to say, oh my gosh, we had the same thing with our daughter. And, you know, it's, yes, it, it validates mm -hmm. what you've suspected. And, you know, my boys are constantly, they're ruthless about this, where <laughs> Brian and Paul, where um, I will give my diagnosis mm -hmm. or opinion uh -huh. on something that might be medical. A mom opinion. A mom yeah. opinion, mom experience, and um, how I am reminded that I don't have an MD uh -huh. <laughs> or a PhD. Uh -huh. um, but when you have that sense that there's something going on and you can't name it or you can't um, find the answer that you need, it is so frustrating um, to not be able to help your child or to do what you know your child needs because it's just not available. Mm -hmm. And we had Paul tested um, for ADHD and it didn't come up. It wasn't until um, he was 12 that it did. So when you have that sense of, okay, something's not quite right. I'm not quite sure how to help with this. I don't think it's it's a fixed thing that you can fix, mm -hmm. but we can work through it and and see what the best um, course of action is and and what would help. Until you have those answers, it's it's so frustrating. But then once you do, and or once someone can say, I totally get that, and and how you feel as a parent um, and can empathize with that, it's it's a huge relief because you know then okay. I I could see something. I know there's something. This makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now we can move forward mm -hmm. with what needs to be done. Well, and I think you said it's important, too, to realize, you know, you may not fix it, but you can work through it. Right. Um, and maintain it. And to kind of just walk with that person through that process. Exactly. Because, you know, I mean, doesn't it all kind of come back to, you know, everything that you're doing to help is about love, right? Right. It's all right. about like just right. 
I care. I want to make a change. I want to help. Um, But it all comes back to the love, you know, the love that a mother has for their child. Right. When it comes down to it. That's exactly. And learning how to accept that this is what life is. You know, like someone may be hearing impaired. Someone may be, you know, visually impaired. They have to adapt. They have to work. They have to figure out how how to move in society and how Mm -hmm. to um, make it work for them. And I think anything with mental illness, whether it's depression, anxiety, um, ADHD, um, those are the ones I'm most familiar with. Um, So I can speak on those. But anytime you have those, it's always the entire family is navigating what Mm -hmm. that needs to be, what that looks like, what it needs to be and how to move with it and not to of course you're going to have limitations there are going to be things that you know that okay this is not going to work for me because it's a trigger and i have to stay away from that or you know whatever it is you just learn how to work through and around things so Mm -hmm. that you can make it be okay Mm -hmm. for yourself and i think that's the biggest struggle that i have found um all the way around with any type of mental illness that it's okay this is what it is let's do what needs to be done for this person and best for this person so that then that person can can be happy or mm-hmm. be able to function or whatever it is that mm-hmm. they need to do well and and i think that i mean the way you describe that is important because every single one of us has to figure out our path, the way we navigate life, the introvert, the extrovert. Um, How much can I be? I'm so extroverted, but then within my work environment, I need to operate like this. And you figure out all these different paths. And for someone with a mental illness, it's really important that we all understand that, that, you know, for someone with severe anxiety, you know, pushing them to the point of like, you have to do public speaking. Mm -hmm. Um, But if we know that about the person, Maybe we can figure out what their role can be exactly. and help them navigate that as right. well, too, in the workplace. Right, exactly. Or for a parent to be able to realize their kid has such a hard time writing, let's figure out a mechanism to right. slow those thoughts down somehow to exactly. help them get that message out to get their work done. Yep, you exactly. Know? So that's huge. Yeah, it's I and learning more from my mistakes than anything else is you have to meet people where they are. You know, if... if if we're willing to be open enough to recognize that, okay, I don't have the answers, they're struggling, you know, or you do have the answers and you can help, finding um, that place and that space where you are meeting that person for who that person is and, mm-hmm. and where that person wants to be and, and not imposing our own beliefs, but being able to allow them to discover themselves Mm -hmm. as they are. Well, it's like, you know, if someone comes into, uh, for grief counseling, right. And they lost a loved one and it's Mm -hmm. been several weeks and Mm -hmm. they're still not getting past, um, just this, uh, ultimate sorrow, this really sadness. And if they come into me and I'm like, okay, you came to a counselor. That is great. I'm going to need you to get over it. And I'm going to need you to, um, I want you to be happy and go, go. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, there's no, a process. Exactly. There's a process. Exactly. And it takes a while for people to get to that process. And so if, knowing that that's where I want them to be, and right. I, I'm going to help them, guide them to get to there. And that's where I want that to be. But I know that's going to be a while. Exactly. Um, exactly. And so for this, it's that, okay, this is who they are. Here's what mm-hmm. I want you to be. I want you to be able to navigate right. life and have this career that you enjoy, but there's going to be some process exactly. to it. Exactly. Yeah. And I think a lot too with my parents and, and I don't know if it's because as all females, um, it was God really, help your father, huh? Yeah, yeah. There one time he met, um, Archbishop May, he, Archbishop May had just been, um, installed as the Archbishop here in St. Louis and the, he was going to all the parishes. And so it was before my youngest sister was born. So there were just four just of us, four. just four girls. And so my dad introduced all of us and, and Archbishop May looked at him and he said, John, blessed are you among women. <laughs> <laughs> and we remind him often yeah, exactly. how lucky he you is, are blessed. how yeah. lucky he is. Um, but 
it was really important for both my mom and dad to teach us how to be independent and to be independent thinkers and, and mm -hmm. to use our gifts for the good, mm -hmm. for the common good. And that, you know, is so important, I think, um, even when people have mental illness, is to give them the freedom to be who they are and who they want to be, um, their true selves. And um, it means also stepping back when you know they're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the hardest things as a parent, no matter who your kid is or if they have any mental health issues, um, just stepping back and knowing that they're going to fall and trip. You know, I think mm -hmm. back when the boys were babies and just learning how to walk and every time they would scrape themselves or fall, I was standing right next to them. Uh -huh. And I remember thinking, okay, if I'm standing right next to them and I can't protect them all the time from getting hurt, then I need to figure out how to step back uh -huh. when they're going to be older and teenagers and not have frontal lobe development mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, you know, of course, keep them safe, but also allow them to make mistakes so that they can learn from them. And that, um, no matter who you are as a parent, that's a hard thing it's to valuable. do. Um, but when you know that your child is very impulsive from ADHD or, you know, they talk about the brain almost being like three years behind in growth mm -hmm. and um, development and, you know, they're in the throes of adolescence and you know that they are going to do stupid, stupid <laughs> things. Um, you know, just allowing that to happen and, but also keeping tabs on what's going on and making sure they aren't so stupid that mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's so detrimental. But that has been um, also a challenge, you know, to know when to step back and when to step in. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that was for both the boys. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've been here today talking a mother's love, um, a mother's love. Um, but and, and I, I keep coming back to that, you know, because I think that's that's why parents do what they do. Right. Um, that's why they stay with it. And Debbie Dugan has been able to share with us um, some of her just personal journey um, in parenting um, somebody who has uh, some challenges with mental health. Right. So, you know, we heard some great things about specific interventions to uh, educating people on the science behind mental health and then also how you take care of yourself and just some of that process. So, um, uh, you know, I always say reach out to Debbie if you want some sponsorship, if we want some sponsorship, but you can also reach out to her. Um, uh, you can find her on our website um, to explore more because um, I know she's always willing to share and help people out. Yeah, so absolutely. if you have any questions, find her on our website. But Debbie, thank you today. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tom. This was, it's so different to be behind the microphone. Yeah, instead of the scribe, instead right? Instead of the scribe. Um, so now you get to kind of write up about this amazing guest we had. You know, you it, know? this could be really beneficial. The words it are going to be, be The boys, I'll probably have an MD yeah. by the time <laughs> I describe it. And yeah, boys, yeah, uh -huh. just watch out. Awesome. <laughs> for what that authority oh, is oh god help you boys i'm sorry <laughs> so anyway um we will talk to you next time thank you debbie thanks tom and visit us at stlouiscounseling.org if you want to look up our services or hear any other podcasts until next time this is tom duff mental health matters this has been mental health matters with tom duff of st louis counseling services check out stlouiscounseling.org for more information